boy. You know, it's my nickname. <laughs> and everyone called me boy. Uh, I come from National Institute of Meteorology, Thailand. Does anyone know this place before? I mean, in Thailand, we call it Aban Mak Vithya. Oh, yeah. It's like this. Yeah, like this. So, the talk today is about what we are doing in this institute. Uh, in our workplace, what we do is we keep the standard, so every standard in the work we have. So basically, we have, I mean, when we talk about the standard, we talk about the unit. So for the unit in the world, we have seven base units, right? So in NIMT, we have all seven base units. And this talk is related to my work because of in 2018, this definition of all units is going to change. And I'll change, I'm going to tell you. And it's all about related to atomic clock. So my talk is about... So I'm going to brief a little bit, probably a little bit, about the history of SI units, where it comes from and when it starts. And secondly, I will start with why we need to redefinition or the unit. And some example of the mass problem that we have to change the definition. And we go to the atomic clock a little bit and the conclusion. So, so the brief history of the uh, SI unit. So on the left side, that is a mass, prototype mass, which kept we keep in the BIPM in France. This mass is, uh, they have just only six prototype mass that define one kilogram. So in the whole world, when you say one kilogram, that refers to that is a, the most precise one kilogram in the world. And on the right side, that is what balance. That is the new type of the way you realize the one kilogram. So the history, it start after the French Revolution 200 years ago. So most of people want to use the same uh, number to, to define quantity. Like they, they agree on the decimal metric. Decimal is mean zero to nine. Right? So they try to make everything based with 10, including wash as well. <laughs> So nowadays, the wash is 24, 60, 60, right? But at that time, they tried to make 10, 100, 100. So in one day, they have 10 hours. And each hour, they have 100 minutes. And each minute, they have 100 seconds. And that second is equal to 0.864 seconds for nowadays. They try to do it, but it's not success, so no one used it. <laughs> And in four years later, they, they, they make the, the prototype of meter. So the meter, at that time, they define as the distance between the North Pole and South Pole. No, one of 10 million distance of between North Pole and South Pole. But the, to measure that, that is very difficult. So they have a guy. Uh, Lagrange and the Lambert, they, they measure the distance between two cities. I cannot remember which city, but that city, they have a distance of 1,000 kilometers. And they make the bar made from platinum. I don't know why platinum, but I know it's expensive. <laughs> so that platinum bar is one meter reference at that time. And all the people agree on that that is a one meter standard. And in later, uh, Mr. Gauss, everyone knows Gauss, right? In the measured magnetic field or something. So they said we should add, instead of meter and kilogram in 1799, we should add second as a base unit as well, because the astronomy, they use a second. And also in, in, in UK, they also have announced the 
the system called CGS, so centimeter, gram, and second. In 1875, so French and British agree on uh, making the, 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 the agreement on they will use the metric system. So they have 15 countries signing on this uh, letter, and they found the BIPM, which is the center of, of weight and measurement at that time. And Five years later, they realized that for electricity, it's not convenient to use mass, uh, length, and second to realize the unit of uh, electricity. So they said, we should have the unit for the electricity as well. So they, they have to choose ohm volt or ampere to be one of the unit for the electricity. And five years later, the BIPM they make the prototype of meter and kilogram again. Uh, and that is uh, the, 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 the prototype, which is made from platinum and iridium. Uh, and on 1889, the first conference on CGPM, they said they're going to use this as an MKS system. And yeah. 1901, the geology, they said, okay, we should have like a four-dimensional system, which is include the electrical unit as well. So that electrical unit get approved on 1946 on CIPM uh, meeting. And also, uh, the, the, I mean, later, uh, Kelvin uh, and Candela and also more get approved in the CGPM meeting. So that is a kind of history of uh, SI unit. So in current, the SI unit, they have seven of them. So time, length, mass, electric current, temperature, luminous intensity, and amount of substance. So all of them, they, they have a definition. Like for time, they define as a Cesium, right? For the length realized by the speed of light and mass with the prototype uh, mass, electric quick current, nowadays they're not realized on anything because of they are like a, instead of realizing the current, they realize the voltage and resistance to realize the current. For temperature, they use triple point of water. Uh, luminous intensity, I think they use the, the web, some wavelength. I, I cannot remember. And amount of substance, they, they rely on the, the mass of carbon atom. And for the new definition, they're going to change this to the constant in physics. Like for time, they're going to have the constant of a frequency. Like 9.192631.70 for the cesium atom. Speed of light 2997924588 in per second, and that we like to meet. Planck constant? I don't know the number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, elementary shot. So that is the future. In 2018, they're going to change to this constant. And why we need to change? All of that to the constant. That is because over the past 40 years, the quantum mechanics, they have kind of experimented a lot on, on that, and they realized that all of this uh, quantity can be realized as a fundamental uh, neutrality, like this. I mean, the realization of a current. As I said, you, uh, they, they need to know I mean, to, to get the current, right, they need to know voltage and resistance, right? So, the voltage, they realize from the jo Josephson effect. So they have a frequency going, and then they have a discrete of voltage. For the quantum ball effect, they have a uh, magnetic field, and then they have like a step of resistance. With these two together, they can realize the ampere. 
But I think in the last 10 years, the NIST and PTV, which is uh, in Germany and USA, they have a device called synchronous electron tunneling. So they have, they just put in the frequency and they can control how much electron it can pass through that junction. And then they can realize the real MF. So they can count how many electrons go through in one second. <laughs> and also, uh, as uh, Tanya said, so we have uh, realized that the uh, speed of light is very constant up to the level of 10 to minus 18. So we can say that is a really constant. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and all of the uh, SI trend to be to go to the, <coughs> that constant. And for the kilogram, they would be, uh, they want to define by the Planck constant by using the watt balance. The watt balance is one side is a mechanical watt, another side is electrical watt. So they try to balance them and then they realize using this, I mean, they, they weigh the, the, the mass by using the electric, I mean, the, the, the current to, to realize how much the weight there. And on. For the Kelvin, they have uh, Boltzmann constant. So instead of they use a triple five water, they can use uh, the acoustic resonator, which is they just throw in gas. If the temperature change, the resonance change. And they can measure the, what is the temperature of that. <coughs> and for the second, uh, this is uh, can be defined by using optical clock instead of a cesium clock nowadays. So, for kilogram, what does it look like? So, that is prototype kilogram. So, it manufactured in 1889 and made from platinum radium, which is, I don't know, probably very expensive and it's very rare elements to, to, to make it. And they have a many copies at that time, so in like 80 copies, they delivered those copies to many countries around the world. So, in Thailand, we have one copy of that as well. And the problem comes from this. So after the manufacture, the measure, they said, okay, that is one kilogram. All of them is one kilogram. After that, they come uh, to the valve in the IPM with three keys, which is separate in each country. And they can go to the valve, open the key, bring, in, bring out uh, the, the mass prototype, and then they wait. There. And they found that, wow, mass change. <coughs> Why change? <laughs> so, it's changing because of after they bring out that mass, they have to clean up. They have the guy, very old guy, they clean it. And then, somehow, probably electron just scattered away because of the cleaning or something. The way it changed. And that mass prototype is not is no longer for the uh, reference at all because of the message keeping changing every time they keep watching. I'll show you this. This is prototype, yes? This one. So, after the first cleaning, you see the mass change by 60 microgram. <laughs> Somehow change. That is because of when you keep that mass for a long time, they have a layer of hydrocarbon and water layer around that mass, so it can gain some, some uh, weight. And after you're cleaning by using the steam and also the UV curing, that all layer, they remove it. They got to remove it. And the weight is just get less. And this happened when after the cleaning. Um, yeah. So then, they said, no, no, it's not a good idea to use that mass at all. They realized it. We have to change it the way we define the mass. So, 
They said, for the new SI unit, we have to change the mass to the Planck constant. But uh, at that time, the scientists, they have uh, two groups of scientists, they said, the way we define the mass, you can use what balance, or you can count atom on the sequence sphere. So they have two groups of scientists. One of them, they develop this uh, one balance, which is a complicated uh, system. And another one, they came up with a very simple idea, just count the atom. How many atoms on that sphere? <laughs> that look crazy, but it's like, it's, it's, it can be counted. So they grow the, they grow the silicon. They try to make it single crystalline as possible. And they make it sphere as, as possible as well. And then they measure the dimension of that sphere. How much the, the, the size and everything. And they make sure that that crystal is single uh, crystal by using X-ray diffraction and also using the interferometer to measure the size. And that group is successfully count the atom and define the kilogram first with the uncertainty of something like 10 to minus 8. So the one kilogram is error by like 10 nanogram, something like that. No, 10 microgram. And, uh, that is successfully defined the, 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 the mass. But another group of scientists, they say, I can do it better using the one balance. But the result is not yet published. <laughs> so the deadline of the publication is on July this year before the redefinition. So we, we will know the results of which group is going to win on this uh, redefinition. But I hope the Planck constant from one balance will win. Because of, uh, as far as I know from the friend, uh, the result is now below uh, 10 to minus 8. It's something roughly around 8 times 10 to minus 9, something like that. But that is kind of uh, the competition, just only for, for, for mass. And on another side, this guy, you see, this one is an acoustic resonator. They have just only, I think, three countries that have this. So in China, in NPL, and also in NIST. So this one, it can be realized, the Boltzmann constant. And, And for the SI unit, but for the new SI unit, for the all constant, you will see all the constant they have a unit second for all of them. That means all of this unit will be relying on atomic clock, all of them. That's why this redefinition will be like uh, the key of this redefinition will be on the atomic clock. And for atomic clock, I mean, this is a clock, and in the history of them is uh, in the past we, we measure what time is it by using the sundial, right? And some country they use the, the bucket with a hole, fill it with water, and then let the water go out, and then they measure that is the time, tick, tick, tick. And then later on, they use a mechanical clock like a pendulum or something like a to be on in the very expensive watch that can keep the, 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 the ticking of the second as well. But the new one is an atomic clock. So atomic clock is very based on the quantum mechanics. So like Tani said, they have Ramsey spectroscopy, they have Rabi oscillation, something like that. So they, they can measure the frequency very, very sensitive. So in terms of clock, it looks like this all the clock in the world, including an atomic clock as well. So the, the structure is like, you have oscillator. 
and then you have a kind of a divider. So like you have, for example, in cesium, you have an oscillator of 9 gigahertz, and you have to divide it to realize one second. And you've got a counter, which is a display of your, your watch. That is a clock uh, configuration. And the definition of the second in the past, maybe before 1960, they said one second is one of a 6400 for the whole day. So that, that, that is a basic idea that everyone knows that in one day they have a 6400 second. And later that, in 1960 and 1967, then it's very crazy that they count how many seconds in the whole year. On year 1900, in January. And that defined the second. I don't know how can how, how they calculate that. But uh, that, trust me, they, they, they calculate that. <laughs> and after that, uh, Louis Essen and Jack Perry they invent uh, atomic cesium. So, the atomic cesium look like this inside. So they have a cesium source, like this. And the cesium source will go through the first magnet using stern galax. So they can separate the state of the cesium. And then the cesium goes through the, that microwave cavity doing the Ramsey spectroscopy. And again, go through the uh, magnetic fields, and then they select the state of, of the atom, and then they can measure this. This is Ramsey spectroscope, and then they pick the P, and then they do the phase lock loop, and then they say that is the frequency standard. And the key thing is, if you can increase this distance, that means you can increase the evolution time. And that made this much more precise. But the problem is when you increase the, the distance of microwave, atom will drop, like a projectile. And then you have to make that pipe in, in angle. But it's not good because of if you make it as an angle, they have a kind of a microwave uh, phase dependence which is one of uncertainty in the atomic clock, and that is quite difficult to, to reduce. So, at least I have one equation of the quantum mechanics. <laughs> so, in atomic clock, it's very easy concept. So you measure the, the state of atom, and then the thing that comes for the instability is the perturbation. So, it, in atomic clock, very, very easy perturbation is to come from the Seaman splitting, and also from the Doppler shift. That is from the quantum mechanical effect. And the two of them, like microwave leakage and microwave power phase shift, that is come from, like I said, when you put the, the microwave as an angle, you can see that phase shift as well. And also for the arm between to resin the two cavity. If the arm is not, the length is not uh, equal, that can cause a phase shift. That is the atomic clock in the you know, whole day. And the new one. So the um, after after the, the the invention of the atomic clock, they said, okay, we're gonna change the definition to this system. So they realize they realize on the. 9.192631720 for the for the cesium, and in 1997 they add the definition that this gonna be measured in the temperature of cesium at zero Kelvin, but no one did it, no one can did it, right? Because at zero Kelvin is not possible. <coughs> and to reach zero Kelvin they need to do laser cooling. So that laser cooling in 19-something, they got a Nobel Prize in 1997. Laser cooling is very basic idea. Like, like you have a truck coming toward you, and you throw the ping pong ball 
to that truck and try to stop it. So you have to have many ping pong balls throw to them, right? And that is like you have atom coming to you, and then you shoot the photon to them and try to stop it. That is the basic idea of laser cooling. And as I said before, that we have to increase the evolution time of the atom. So instead of we put them uh, horizontal, we put it in vertical. So we make everything vertical and increase the distance of the carrier by throwing a thumb up and it going down. But the problem with throwing a thumb up, if a thumb is very hot, it's going to fly away. It's not going back to the same hole, right? So they need the laser cooling. So they do the, they do the preparation of atom down there, and then they shoot it up, go to the cavity, and then they go back to the same cavity, and they can measure the Ramsey spectroscopy. By using this, they increase the time of evolution, and they reduce the phase shift because of they use the same cavity. They didn't use two cavities, but they use the same cavity. This means the phase shift is, can be ignored. And also, they can reduce the Doppler effect because of the velocity is going up and going down. It's the same. And the results of this that you can keep the second within 100 million years. So, I mean, in 100 million years, we're going to achieve by one second by using this fountain clock. So if you go to the uncertainty budget, the, or the thing that makes them instability. So you can see the biggest one is coming from the, uh, sorry, the microwave power difference. That is very difficult to, to control because of sometimes the microwave comes from your mobile phone or everything can interfere that. And then it makes an oscillation on the microwave uh, power, and that is uh, the biggest one. And also the collision of shape wave. That is quite difficult to be ignored as well because of when you have the same cesium atom, the same stage, you can collide with each other and make a shape in terms of frequency as well. And that is a, uh, the, the old atomic clock and in the future, we would like to change it to the optical clock because of, in terms of sensitivity, if you have, look at the, this equation, the Q atom, if you use a cesium, that Q is something like 10 to minus 10 times to the 10, something like that. But if you use another transition, like for, for ytterbium or for strontium, which is have an optical transition, something like 400 terahertz instead of 9 gigahertz, you can increase this and that make the stability much better, I mean, or sensitivity much better. If you look at the line, this one is the microwave uh, clock and the red one is the optical clock. So you can see in the future, the trend of the optical clock is going to be much, much better. And nowadays, the most accurate clock in the world can have the instability of 10 to minus 18, which is very small. And most of people ask me, like, why you need 10 to minus 18? <laughs> Who care about that? <laughs> so, <clears throat> I mean, before, before the end of last year, I got a call from National Research Council in Thailand. I mean, I, I, I write a proposal to get a funding from them. And they asked me, like, you said, you want to make a clock with an instability of 10 to minus 15. Who need that? <laughs> <laughs> Just, okay. <laughs> How can you answer that? But the, the thing is, I mean, most of the clock maker around the world I mean, facing this problem because of a lot of government that funded your, your project will ask you why, why you need 10 to minus 18, why you need 10 to minus 16. And the answer of, of everyone said, it's about the GPS. 
great for you to define your position on the earth. You need very precise <coughs> frequency. I mean, imagine <coughs> if you have a GPS, say you will see a turn like very close to the speed of light, and your clock there, they have the instability around 10 to minus 8, for example. That can make the diff, uh, the the error of the position around three meters. That's ten to minus eight. But if you go to ten to minus sixteen, it's go down to three nano, thirty nanometer. Right. Also, who cares about thirty nanometer? <laughs> <laughs> But that, 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 that is the, 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 the only answer that I can answer. But some people say it's going to be like a frontier science. Like you can, you can find a mineral underwater or under underground by using atomic clock. Because of, like if you want to find gold, you will have the mass, right? And the density of the gold is quite high. So if you put the atomic clock around the land there, and you see the gravitational shift, you can say that where they have the gold. <laughs> Something like that, great crazy. Or in the military, like if you have a stale plane going to your country, you cannot detect anything, but that stale plane have a mass and have a gravitational effect. So you can see the, that thing as well, but that is great crazy. I don't know who gonna use that. <laughs> okay, to change the optical clock, a lot of scientists, a lot of laboratories around the world try to do it and try to measure the optical transition of many, many elements, many, many atoms, ions, and they report the measurement to the DIPM. And the committee in the the IPM said, okay, we're gonna have like a second representative of the second as this sixth element, sixth uh, transition. So they have strontium around 429 kilohertz, ethereum iron, ethereum, and for the iron, they have strontium iron, ethereum iron, mercury iron, and aluminum iron. So they, they, uh, they announced it website that that is the fusion of the second. And because of we are metrology, we love number. So we have a lot of numbers on that. So we, a <clears throat> lot of uh, laboratory measure the exact, not exact, the value of the optical transition of each element. And then they report it to the BIPM. And in 2015, the committee announced this with the uncertainty like this. But actually, this uncertainty around 10 to minus 16 or 10 to minus 15, they, re they limit on this level because of they compare this measurement against the microwave clock. So the limitation is on the microwave clock. So the most accurate uh, microwave clock at the moment, I mean, season clock, is in PTP, it's around 3 times 10 to minus 16. So, this uncertainty comes from that instability of the microwave clock. But if they compare ethereum and ethereum to each other, the uncertainty will go down to 10 to minus 18 level. Like in PTP, they compare the octopole transition and quadrupole transition of ethereum ion, these two transitions. They report the uncertainty around two times in minus eighteen, and that is the fusion of our clock. Okay, and if we look at the 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 uncertainty margin of that comparison, they will see that the most uh, contribution on, on this budget is come from back body radiation. So. Most of people know back body radiation, right? So it's like when you have a chamber, the chamber they have a temperature, right? And that like third 
30 degrees Celsius, they radiate some wavelength that interfere atom, and then they shift the wavelength of that, uh, they shift the frequency of the, uh, the transition, and then they report it on that. So they have some crazy group, they try to cool down the whole chamber using liquid nitrogen up of the whole chamber, just a small part in the chamber, like if we can strong chamber like this. So they cool down the, the chamber inside with, uh, I think, liquid nitrogen, right? I'm not sure. So, and then, and then they, they measure the, the, the back body radiation chip and then they can reduce it quite a lot. Yeah. So, to conclude, it's very short. So, in, in, in the past, we, we have uh, uh, the definition of the SI unit like this. So, they have second ampere, meter, Kelvin, candela, kilogram, and more. And, and the scientists realized that the kilogram has a problem on the way it is changed again. And they want to move it to, to the constant, the physical constant. So, they proposed the new SI unit, like this. So they tried to propose them like something like 20, 10 years ago, and they not approved it yet, because of they have to get a lot of results of experiment to, to be sure that the new SI unit is correct, something like that. How about the second? So. Last year, they have a meeting on how about when we, when we should re redefine the second. So, most of scientists say the optical clock nowadays, they have a lot of laboratory around the world try to make optical clock, and the, the, the result is much, much better than cesium fountain clock. And they say the criteria should be the, optic, the new optical clock has to uh, get uncertainty around 10 to minus 18. And that clock has to be compared to each other. So that means if I have a clock and I measure 10 to minus 18, I cannot trust that my, my clock is correct. So I have to com compare to another clock around the world. And from that, you have to have a link between two clocks. And that link is a problem nowadays because of the only link that can measure around 10 to minus 18 is by optical fiber. And optical fiber is limited by the distance. The longer distance can, can be done in, in, in PTV around roughly 2,000 kilometers. So they measure, the, they, they compare the clock in PTB and in France and in Germany and France, and then they, they report them, but with the uncertainty of 10 to 17, not 18. So, in the future, they have to improve this. And also, the clock that you have to be compared have to be in many, many, many nationalities, like uh, in Japan, must have strontium. In NPL, must have strontium as well, this as well, and have these three clock have to be compared. But the problem is, they have like a few uh, atom clock now that, that can be compared because of like in each nation they have different type of element. But the idea is that to compare and come uh, on this meeting is to make it as a ratio. That can be the, I mean, to solve the problem of to have the same clock. So you can make, measure the ratio and then they report to the team as well to make it much easier to, to, to get to realize the, the, the new second. And also, they recommend that this all transition must be contributed to TAI. TAI is an international atomic time scale. So you have to. Uh, uh, to, to calculate the second by using the optical clock. I mean, no, no one did it before. I mean, no one reported this uh, value uh, 
to contribute to TAI. They just they just publish and they report to the IPM, but they never calculate. So in the future, they recommend that we should calculate this and then make this task scale much much more uh, precise. And then after that, they will be kind of uh, consider again that when we should redefine the second. So the next meeting is on 2018, the second will not redefine. The next one is on 2012, 2022. So they, they're gonna be consider again that we should define the new second one. So, I start my talk with this picture because I really like it. Because this one is a sundial and it's on Mars at the moment. They come with a robot called Curiosity. And on that, that plane is not just a sundial. They use this plane to calibrate the color of, your, of the camera as well. And also, just for fun, I mean, probably they found some life on Mars that can read something, so they put some language on it. So at least they have Thai language, you see that? Down. <laughs> yeah. So that is my favorite clock. So, thank you. Thank you for your attention.